every pilot that gets off with Alaska Airlines, we're required to do the map and build run. That's nice, like yeah. Like a of passage. Right? Yeah, that's cool, that's cool, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your um, favorite place to find the milk run? Um, I guess I, 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 I always like going to the catch a can. What's going on guys? Casey Fair here. And Chris Park. And today is the big day. Today is the big day. We're doing the milk run today, the Alaska Airlines milk run. Alaska Airlines Flight 64 on a Alaska Airlines Boeing 737-700, November 706 Alpha Sierra. And uh, we're going to Ketchikan today, and then from Ketchikan we're going to Seattle, where we will be... That's the end. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, um, we're going to be doing the shortest flight in Alaska Airlines network from Petersburg to Renjo, Alaska. It's about 24 miles. It's going to be in the air for about 10 minutes on that one. It's going to be an interesting one, only a 10 minute flight on a 737. Um, that's kind of the reason why we chose the um, this specific milk run over any others. And um, yeah, this, this past trip has been absolutely insane. Yeah, this is probably one of my favorite spotting trips we've gone so far. Yeah. This entire week in Alaska has just been absolutely insane. And yeah, this is the uh, final video, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Stay tuned for upcoming ones. So, shall I go through TSA? Yeah, let's go through TSA. We shall. Just for TSA, in Chris and I filmed an intro, we checked our bags. We didn't feel like we were going to check online, so we could only check them on the catch can with the kiosk, and then we breached the bag drop line. Once we get to catch can, we're going to check them on to Seattle. After we cleared TSA, we decided to check out the Alaska Airlines lounge at Anchorage. To enter, all you need is an Alaska first class seat, one more lounge access, or an Alaska MasterCard holder. In my honest opinion, in terms of catering and seating, it really wasn't anything special. It has a bar with some alcoholic drinks, coffee machine, and soda fountain. The buffet is only select foods with a series of toppings. Since it was morning, it was all breakfast foods. On the side, there are hot foods that vary throughout the day based on meal. Outside the food, the main area seating with tables and big comfy chairs looking at the amazing view of the ramp with the cargo and commercial jet action. That is definitely what gives the lounge its glory. In the center, there is a big hot fireplace and finally at the far end, there is a quiet spot to charge and get some work done. After the lounge, Chris headed toward the boarding area and I headed the other way to get some breakfast. Respecting the fact that I was still on vacation, I went to Krispy Kreme. Three of them, yeah. Three blades, yeah, three. And after I secured my very nutritious vacation breakfast, I made my way to board our 22 Fueling 737-700 down southeast Alaska. November 609 Alpha Sierra was the star of the show today and she was delivered to Alaska Airlines brand new in August of 99. When I saw the screen showing the service seeing all the places we will be continuing made me feel even more pumped for this experience. The Moroccan has been something I've been wanting to do for multiple years now and today is finally that day. How's it going? Good. Um, so we are actually um, trying out the milk run today. Um, okay. The Alaska Airlines milk run. Okay. So we're going all the way down to Seattle. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've wanted to do the milk run for a really long time now. So yeah, just today's the day. Cool. Yeah. There's some, some stickers in the Ketchikan store. Oh yeah? can go inside and say I survived the milk run. Not okay. We're getting those. We're definitely getting those. <laughs> this, That's funny. Little, it's got, and it looks like Tom Hanks on there, kind of. It says Alaska Airlines. Alaska, I survived the milk run. That's epic, that's epic. Yeah, that's I wasn't planning to stop there. So are you guys flying um, the 7th year? Are we down to SeaTac? Or are you switching between the Ketchikan? Uh, we're going to swap it out in Juneau. Nice, okay. Come back here. Cool, okay. So so how does the, um, crew, the crew situation work on the milk run? Like, going all the way down? Usually when you get down that, if you're, you guys will get the same people all the way through. So like if he and I were doing it today, we'd get the airplane in Juneau and then we would do... Um, um, Petersburg Wrangles, 
Seattle. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh. So, with the Petersburg Wrangle flight, that's like 10 minutes, right? Yeah, it's pretty short. Yeah. So, that's the reason like why we chose this milk one in particular. Yeah. yeah. So, do you just like hand fry that entire thing? Uh, no. I turn the autopilot on. Oh, yeah? It just depends. I don't know. It yeah. depends on what the day is. Yeah. So, yeah. sometimes guys will, when we could fly at VFR, we'd kind of probably hand fly it and do that oh. kind of like a really short trip. Do you able to do that one VFR? Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, before they took it away from us. Oh. It's pretty fun. It's a short trip. It's really a neat trip. That's though. insane. It's yeah. Really fun. Yeah. And a big airplane. Flying a 737 VFR. Yeah. 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 Um, 10 minute flight. Yeah, I'm an avid flight simmer, and there was and one day um, I took the um, 737-200 the entire way down, the entire milk run. It took like eight and a half hours, right. and on the Petersburg and Joe leg, I hand flew that entire thing. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Go. Yeah. So what you guys are just are you? What's we're, just, your we're just tagging along. Tagging along for the flight. Okay. Yeah. Are you with Alaska? Like are you? No. Or you're just like, you're just we're just aviation geeks. You're just guys. Yeah. And what are you gonna do? How come? Like, what are, you, are you going to Seattle for some reason or something? Or? Um, well, that's where we're splitting up. Yeah. We're spending the night there, and then we fly our own separate ways along the way. Yeah. Okay. I, I yeah. fought a, a Bellingham, he fought to Denver. Okay. Yeah. We okay. spent we spent the uh, past week here in Alaska. Okay. Um. So we went to Barrow. Oh, nice. And then we went. We did the um K two um oh, up in cool. uh to meet Tuck, Tuck Did you land up there? there? We, we did. Yeah. Oh, nice. We landed on the glacier. Cool. That was insane. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, That's pretty rare. Yeah. yeah. Some guys that work here did all that stuff. Really? Cool. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Um, people before doing the um, cargo flight, the passenger flights, when you do the, um, oh, this, oh, this Alaska flying. The cargo flights compared to passenger flights? Yeah, like what do you perform more? Do you have preference? Uh, I, like wearing, I like doing the cargo because I get to wear jeans and a t-shirt. That's funny, yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's very casual. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Cool, yeah. Um, That's what we did yesterday. Oh, really? Nice. Where'd you go? Uh, we just went to Seattle, Juneau, and then up here. Oh, nice. Cool. Nice. Cool. 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 Tomorrow we do. We do. We do. Juneau, Sitka, Catch Again, Seattle. Sitka's a fun place to land. Yeah, it's really fun. Sitka's pretty, fun. Pretty yeah. Pretty right on the water. Oh, do you have a um, favorite place to land? Like, uh, uh, like in Southeast? I like landing in Seattle when I'm going home. Nice. <laughs> respectful, respectful. When I was doing that in the sim, that was really satisfying when I when I finished on TTAC. After a successful flight like visit with Captain John and First Officer Lawrence, I made my way back to seat 3A, which is going to be my seat all the way down to Seattle. Alaska 737-700 first class seat is really no different than the 900's first class seat, except the 700's cup holder is a lot deeper on the center armrest, and we also got a foot rest too. I finished the last of my donuts, ads boarding no clothes, and before I knew it, we were pushed back and taxing the runway 25 left for an on time departure. Alaska flight 64 to Juno, Petersburg, Wrangell, Ketchikan, and Seattle. The crew today is Captain John, First Officer Lawrence, I'm Angela, and with me are Morgan and Steve. Safety is our highest priority, and we appreciate your keen attention while we share some important safety information. We had a back taxi on 7 left, which was close at the time to get to runway 25 left for our 1 hour and 27 minute flight.
As you progressed over the mountains east of Anchorage, our flight attendant Angela came to the first class cabin with a normal beverage service. I went ahead and ordered my usual Diet Coke with no ice. She then came through with a snack basket and I respectively had to get the Biscoffs. Later on, our flight attendant handed out Clorox wipes, which is something that I haven't seen yet on Alaska. Not that it's a bad thing at all. I gladly took them since my hands were sticky from all those Krispy Kremes. We started our initial descent into Juneau, and I'm not going to do a rally rating for each individual flight, not only because it's going to be overwhelming for me at the time, especially on the shorter ones, but I'm just going to do one big one at the end during the final leg, only because we're going to be on the exact same aircraft and only two different crews during the entire milk run down. After kissing that pavement on runway 26, we got to our gate. We had the option to get up and stretch our legs if we were continuing on. We decided to visit the flight deck here in Juno to visit the crew that would be taking us all the way down to Seattle. Yeah, I've done the milk runs. We've all done the milk run. Uh, yeah, every pilot that gets on with Alaska Airlines, we're required to do the milk run. That's nice, like yeah. Right? Yeah, that's cool, that's cool, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your um, favorite place to find the milk run? Um, I guess I, 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 don't, I always like going to the catch a can. Catch a can, nice. catch yeah. a can, yeah, catch a can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, we're doing um, Petersburg to Rangel. We're doing that one. Uh -huh. Just because it's the shortest 737 flight in the yeah. network. 24 yeah. miles. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Short one. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a fun one. Yeah. A fun one, yeah. Keeps Maybe. us busy up here. We're really busy up here. You just like hand fry that one? It's the entire most, thing? Most Mostly of us hand, hand fry. fry it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. On and a good day? Depends on the individual pilot, you know. Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. And flying keeps us busy. If we use the oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It keeps us less busy. But, yeah. Yeah. I'm in Avon Flight Simmer, and um, I did um, the milk run on a 737 200. I hand blew the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right on. Uh, that, yeah. Like, at least, yeah. After the visit, Chris and I returned to our seats and stayed there. The Juno passengers deep plane and the cleaning crew came on to prepare for the next leg. We got some new flight attendants to fly us down to Ketchikan. A Juno gate agent boarded to check people's running passes who were going to Petersburg to confirm the seat assignments. New packs got on to do their commute to Petersburg and Wrangell, and that got us away from the gates of Juno to start a 45 minute hop to Petersburg. After our extremely light 25 second takeoff for we were climbing at 3,000 feet per minute on our way to a new Alaskan community known as Petersburg. Due to the short duration of the next three flights, there wasn't any sort of food or beverage services. On the way down to Petersburg, we got put in a holding pattern for a few minutes to make way for some GA traffic doing some instrument work.
After that crazy left pattern for runway 5 in a big 737, our flight attendant handed out some box waters for the turn and we let some more passengers off and we let some more back on. Our departure out of Petersburg was a little bit delayed because of ground crew shortages in Petersburg and it took us a while to get our bags back on, but before I knew it we were taxiing out for the quick 10 minute flight to Wrangell. Flight time to Wrangell, a quick 10 minutes. Uh, please recheck your seatbelt to make sure this is driven fast. After Wrangell, we'll head to Catch a Can and And like that, we're in Wrangell and the bastard deplaning. While I waited to leave for catch can, and since I hadn't left my scene since Juno, I decided to get up and use the onboard lav. Our bursar and Trini came around with some water to give to the packs so that were going on to catch can in Seattle. And after it felt like the quickest turnaround today, we are turning and burning on the 23 minute hop to Ketchikan.
We went all the way up to an altitude of 12,800 feet before immediately descending right down, and then we entered another tight holding pattern before turning final and arriving onto runway 11 in Ketchikan. That's us done and catch can on the second ten dollar slag. We're gonna make our way into the gate and hop off and get our bags rechecked on this quick, quick turnaround. When you book the Merkin, it doesn't let you go all the way through to Seattle. So what Chris and I had to do is book Anchorage to catch can on Alaska 64 and then book Seattle separately, which meant when you checked out bags, it only gave you the back tax for catch can and didn't realize that we only checked it to catch can until much later. So during our turnaround on catch can, we had to deplane plane get our bags from the baggage claim area, we checked them, dropped them off again, and we cleared TSA before making it back on on the short turnaround time. There's an old bottle in there, so we know. Okay. Does it need fry? Oh, it has fry. Yeah. All right, mission accomplished. We made it back to our home, three A. Just minutes after I settled back in, and Trini came through taking orders for a late lunch service. If you know me well enough, Alaska's food options really aren't known to turn me on for these videos, so I didn't get anything but a soft drink. Today, Captain Ken and First Officer Corey. Way up front, I'm Infinity, and with me are Chantel and Hannah. Set the wings and two doors out. Place the vest over your head. Bring the waist strap to the front and buckle. Tight by pulling on the end. Devices should be unplugged from seat power in airplane mode and held or secured. If you're seated in an exit row, ensure the window shades are open. We hope you enjoy our one hour and 15 minute flight to Seattle. Pushed back and safety demoed, and it was us off on the go home leg.
again, here we are leveled off. As we make our way back to Seattle on the final lag, I'm gonna use this time to rate this unique and comfy flying shuttle bus ride with my totally original Rally leading scale. If you're new here, this is my way of rating all my flights to the end of every trip report of mine. Like I said earlier, I'm going to rate all of my flights in this one rating just because they are all on board the same aircraft with one single crew swap. This was all under Alaska Flight 64 after all. The service gets a 10 out of 10. Our two parcels, Angela and Infinity, took amazing care of us both in the air and on the ground during the turnarounds. They kept us well stocked with snacks on the first leg and all around very reliable and talkative throughout the afternoon. The Wi Fi was not applicable. It didn't work on any of the legs, but honestly, I really couldn't care less because the flights were way too short for that anyway. The food was not applicable either. I didn't eat anything other than Biscoff cookies and Cheez Its. Those don't count, but they're a good selection of snacks. I'm giving the cleanliness a 9 out of 10. This beautiful 737 was amazing and she didn't look a day of her brand new, but I'm gonna penalize it for the side panel. It was a little bit loose, but hey, that's absolutely nothing that about me in this truck can fix, and I guess she's just showing her old age. The seat gets an 8 out of 10. It's everything you'd expect from a 737 700 with a first class cabin. Wide, big center armrest, and plenty of storage. The one thing I am penalizing it for is the legroom. I wish there was more legroom, and that's coming from me who's at 5 foot and 6 inches, but I get it. That's not a lot of space to fit a first class on the 737-700, but the one thing I did enjoy is that footrest. The entertainment gets an easy 10 out of 10. My Wi-Fi never worked and the backseat IFU is non-existent, so all I had was downloaded content on my iPhone, which was also non-existent. So that left me with the views out the window. Seeing Southeast Alaska pass throughout the day was absolutely stunning, especially when we got to Petersburg and we could actually see the ground. Having all the stops made me almost feel like we were getting a small tour of the small part of the Southeast region of Alaska, and this entire trip's idea was to see Alaska. Mostly it's the aviation side, but for this being my first time up there, this was absolutely epic. And even all of these flights being as short as they were, I was fine. Because it was also pretty hard to get bored during the quick duration that we were airborne. So the overall Raleigh rating for this flight gets a 9 out of 10. Another further note is how interesting it was seeing the American as an essential service to connect these small remote towns with a series of short flights as if we were flying bus service on a big 737 opposed to some Cessna, Caravan, or Beechcraft. I was casually seeing people commute from Anchorage to their small village or out of their small village going to Seattle and using the American as a casual term, not to mention staying on the same plane in the same seat for 9 whole hours as if it were a Southwest flight. And everyone, that's going to be it for this video, and that's also going to be it for this Alaska mini trip series. I really hope you guys enjoyed it as much as Chris and I did on these flights. And also, this milk kind is something I've wanted to do in forever, and I'm finally glad I got to it. I know I'm not the first person to do it, and I'm definitely not the last person to do it either. So, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video, and I hope to see you guys on my next adventure. Bye. There's a PT on a Boeing. I've never heard of this. Look at this here, 737, Mr. Park. November 609 off of Sierra. The trusty bird that brought us on this here milk run. Right here in Ranger, Alaska. Uh, proof that we made it. We're in the line to Kadoba right now.